Folks, we are all on this together. This is the Wedding Industry Law Podcast, a podcast dedicated to wedding professionals trying to keep it legal. And now your host, Rob Shank. Welcome back to the Wedding Industry Law Podcast. This is going to be episode two, coming off the heels of the episode I put out a couple days ago. I promised you that these episodes would be weekly, but I just wanted to throw another one out there this week to continue to address some of the coronavirus concerns that I didn't think that would be able to last a week. So um, that's why we're here today. The what I what I really wanted to say, I guess that maybe I didn't say before, maybe I didn't see on some of these other programs that I've been appearing on, is that. Remember that everything is going to be coming down to the wording of this contract. So, um, you know, what happens with the money if you can't rebook? Um, how long do you have to rebook? What constitutes a force majeure? These will all be handled by your contract. To the extent that it is not handled by your contract, the, um, the name of the game is the only person or persons that are going to be able to definitively tell you whether or not a pandemic is a force majeure event in your area, what happens with the money, these questions surrounding the force majeure clause will be a judge or a jury way down the road. There is no arbiter. There's no other person, TV personality, podcast personality, bald guy, not bald guy, lady, doesn't matter. Everybody can talk, but at the end of the day, the only words that are really going to matter is, is the words coming out of, of a judge um, and her bench or the, or the jury. So the wording of your force majeure clause or the wording of your contract, it's extremely important. I mean, it's what I advocate for every day. Um, but in a situation like this, the contract is the starting point. It's what you can bring to the table. And the, the end result of what you want in a time like this is not to have somebody else tell you what it means. It's to come to an agreement with your client about what it means and how you can go forward, how you can rebook that date. Suing somebody or being sued is the last resort. If it's even a resort, I would say it's not a resort. Um, and, and I'm an attorney. It's something that you don't want to do. It's somewhere where you don't want to be. So contract language is important. I talk about it all the time. But at the end of the day, when you're dealing with a business that's in the middle of a pandemic and you're in a community that's in the middle of a pandemic, the number one thing that you want to consider is not throwing the contract in somebody's face, not having a contract thrown in your face per se. It's having a meeting of a minds, one parent, human community member to another. What can we do to move through this? What can we do to rebook this date with the least amount of distress that we possibly can, can have. Um, that's that's what it's going to come down to. Um, I've said many times before, and not on this podcast, but other places, that litigation is a zero-sum game. You don't want to sue somebody. You don't want to be sued. You don't want to threaten to sue somebody, especially at times like this. Even if it's not times like this, usually I say it's not worth it to sue somebody. It's not worth it to, 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 to threaten somebody. You catch more flies with honey. So that's, that's kind of the point of today. Your contract is going to guide what, what you can say, how you can act. But at the end of the day, what I'm seeing in my anecdotal evidence is that it's the best business owners. It's the, the people that have the greatest command of customer relations that are having the easiest time through this. You could probably, that, as somebody that is great with people, that's great with customer relations, could probably have a contract that has you know, two snakes fighting over, you know, a fig. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They'll find a way to make that client happy and make the things 
and make things happen. And that essentially makes them litigation proof. And I probably shouldn't be saying that, but that's, that's probably going to be the truth. But at any rate, the theme of the day is to the best of your absolute ability, offer your clients a value proposition, offer your clients something that's going to get them to, to, to rebook that date that is convenient for all parties involved and get it done. That is not my expertise. That it, it, again, if I knew everything about business, I would be on my yacht. I would be in my spaceship floating around. I'm not. I'm going to I'll let you listen to other podcasts about how to close in, in hard situations, how to make those closes, how to make those value propositions and business decisions that gets the job done. But that's the name of the game. That's the theme of the of the day. That's the theme of this podcast today. It's not necessarily, here's the contract terms that you need. That was last episode. It's here's where we're at based on that contract language. But at the end of the day, we need to come together. We need to get this done by any means necessary with the exception of the means being soon somebody. Um, with that being said, there are a couple things that I would say you need to keep in mind as you're going through the process of rebooking these dates, as you're using kindness, humility, um, compassion to rebook these dates with clients that are probably not as distressed as you are right now. This is probably going to be the most distressed you, you're, you're at because you've got 15, 20, 30 dates that you're having to juggle. The clients just got that one wedding and five, five, 10 vendors they're worried about. I mean, everybody's distressed, but you're probably more distressed, but I've got news for you. Depending on how long this lasts, a few months down the road, that client might be more distressed than you because maybe they've lost their job because that, I've got news for society. It's not just the wedding and event industry. It's not just the restaurant industry. That's just the first one. So from a matter of karma, it's great to, you know, offer the olive branch and be kind and try to work with these people because you never know, like, you, you know, and vice versa. But at any rate, as you're using compassion and, and love to rebook these dates, that's not like a hippie. As you're doing the best you can as a business owner to rebook these dates, um, the first thing that I would I would recommend is to make sure that to the extent that anything is changing with this contract, and I don't mean just the date, because obviously the date is changing because you're rebooking it. That's just the principle of the matter, right? But if the services change, so for example, if you were going to have an, an April event, you're a florist, and that means that this is a particular type of flower that you were going to get, and you're rebooking the date for November, and you know for a fact that it's going to be impossible to get that flower, that quantity, or that kind of quality, that needs to be addressed in whatever memorialization you make of that rebooking. If it's an email, if it's a new contract on paper altogether, if it's an electronic contract, if it's a text message, if it's a telephone conversation, you need to make sure the client understands that and it's 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 reduced down to some type of writing. We'll get to what type of writing in a second, but you want to make sure that if something has changed, it's addressed. So if the new date, your all-star second assistant photographer can't be available. You have to hire somebody else. Make sure the client knows that if it's good, if you're going from five assistants to two assistants and you're a coordinator client needs to know that it needs to be written down in that writing. So that way there's no misunderstanding about, well, the original wedding was going to be like this. What happened here? All that needs to be addressed in some type of new writing when you're rebooking that date. It's extremely important. It can't be left to people's memories. You can't just say, thank you so much for rebooking this date. You don't know what kind of hell I've been through this past week. I appreciate that and hang up the phone. You need to follow up. There needs to be something that materialize, that, that memorializes everything that you have agreed to for the new date. Any type of new change that's coming at them, anything that's that's not being done the second time around that would have been done the first time around. Make sure that gets to reduce your writing and it gets agreed to. Um, the second thing is, is 
to make sure that if you're booking, rebooking this date, not too far in the future, if you're talking about less than three months, there's a possibility that we could still be in this situation. So you want to address that in your rebooking. Whenever you memorialize your rebooking, make sure that that's in there. This is what's going to happen if we still can't have functions of over 10, 15 people. This is what happens if, you know, the health department in my city is still saying that we can't have restaurants open. That needs to be addressed. Where does the money go? How long do you have to rebook? What dates, you know, what dates will you be available? These type of things, go ahead and have that taken care of. So what happens from a contractual standpoint when you're rebooking this date and the client's agreeing to, you know, change around the type of services or whatever is essentially you're, you're forming a new contract. So at the end of the day, you want to make sure that whatever the quote unquote new terms, not just the new date, but whatever things are changing I'm memorialized in this quote unquote new contract. Um, so that's, that's kind of my, I can't give you the business and I can't give you the business education about how to close on the rebooking, about how to smooth things over, about how to, what are the right things to say to somebody? I don't know those things. I can only tell you what's going to be helpful down the road in terms of having a document that gives you the strength in the legal component to bring to the table the love and compassion if you have to rebook, blah, blah, blah. So um, that's where I'm coming from today. Offer honey, not vinegar. You catch more flies. Um, when you do, if you're lucky enough and you get that date rebooked, make sure it's memorialized to a writing that reflects all the changes to the services or the prices or whatever, that the, the value propositions are in there. And that you have depending on how far in the future you have rebooked the state, you deal with the fact or you deal with the contingency that the pandemic is still here and the restrictions on events are still here. So what to do if, if that's the case. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of, I think that's the, the crux of this quote unquote emergency episode. Because like I said, I want to try to do this weekly, but there were some things that I wanted to, to get out there um, quicker than that. I didn't think they could wait until Monday. But um, with with the main the main meat of the episode being over, I left my pop filter off. Pop. Anyway, um, let me just say this again. Um, I anticipate this podcast to be a weekly thing to debut or come out on Mondays to be published on Mondays in the morning sometime on Eastern time. Um, right now you can, it seems to me that you are only, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but right now I believe this podcast is only available on YouTube and my website, which is weddingindustrylaw.com. Um, so you can watch it or you can listen to it through the weddingindustrylaw.com website. Right now it's it doesn't seem to be appearing on searches on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, these things, even though technically I published them through a syndicated service that should, it should go out to all these places, but I guess I, I'm not quite sure why it's not. Um, but if it's there, let me know. Um, so theoretically I should be on all the podcast mediums right now. I'm not maybe in a couple of weeks I'll be there. So for now, if you um, if you're wanting to consume this, it's going to be on YouTube or my website. Um, the next thing is, um, if you have any ideas for content, let me know. Um, like I can answer kind of broad topic questions. I can't, you know, you can't call me and say, "Hey, the cops are outside of my house. What should I tell them?" I can't answer those type of questions. Um, but. I, I would love to get your feedback to figure out um, how best to educate you on things that matter to you the most. Um, I mean, I can yak all day about stuff, but I want to make sure that somebody's out there listening to it. So you can email me, rob at weddingindustrylaw.com. Again, that's rob at weddingindustrylaw.com. You can leave a comment on YouTube, um, that kind of thing. So um, 
yeah, I think that's, I think that's about, is there anything else? Um, email me shows coming along, expect a, 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 another episode to be available on Monday, March 23rd. Cause as I, as I go to publication on this, I think it's either March 17th or 18th. Um, so the next episode will be March 23rd. So be on the lookout for that. If you like it, share it with friends. Um, and if you're wanting more information about force majeure clauses, pandemics, coronavirus, how it relates to wedding cancellations and contracts, um, I'm going to leave a link in the show notes to uh, the Wedding MBA podcast, which is, I was just on and I go into depth. I went into depth there. And you can check that out. Also, um, the first episode, the previous episode of this podcast I talked about, I'll leave that in the show notes as well. Um, and I will be appearing tomorrow, March 18th, on a Facebook Live feed um, dealing with these issues. And I'll leave a link in the show notes for that as well. Um, so be safe out there. Do the best you can to rebook these dates. And with that, we'll see you next week.